Okay, so let's try to answer this question. Uh, in fact, um, let me just um, uh, start another screen here so I can have a blank screen to work with. Um, okay, uh, so uh, when um, um, when um, when I go to my um, main method, which is here in week four dot Java, um, and I, the only statement I have in my main method is just create new rectangle. But now I can do something like this: rectangle dot move, right? And I can move it by. I can move it by 15 points in each direction, okay, in x and y direction. Okay, so this method is available. We know that it's going to, to do whatever it's supposed to do. And of course, I can do a similar thing with a circle, right? So I could also create a circle. Uh, circle uh, CC equals uh, new circle, new circle. And as you know, it takes the coordinates, let's say 50, 45, and the radius size is five, uh, uh, five uh, units, which is uh, likely to be just pixels. So this is a relatively uh, tiny circle. And I can also move it if I wanted to, right? So I'd say, let's move my circle, uh, say by... Um, uh, by 100 points uh, uh, down and uh, uh, to, to the right and uh, I don't know maybe uh, minus uh, five points uh, uh, along the y-axis okay so I can I can do the move but remember that circle inherits the move from the base shape we say that uh, the base shape provides some basic services so it, in fact it provides the constructor which which captures x and y uh, point which is is very likely to be utilized by many drawing primitives um, it also provides storage for x and y and it also provides some basic move for this uh, uh, for this point okay assuming that uh, a shape does have a point Okay, so going back to my circle right here, uh, like I said, uh, the circle inherits um, uh, the move method from the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, from the base shape. However, in rectangle, I completely redefine move uh, on my own. So this is what I'd like to show you is that uh, when uh, when we create methods and so let's let's just say uh, this is um, this is um, base shape a move right with its uh, with its uh, parameters so I'm skipping the parameters here right so this is a base shape move Okay, fine. This is a method, and it has some executable code, right? So I'm just uh, I'm just uh, using some 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 lines here to show that this is a method which has executable code at, at runtime. We also observe that uh, we had a rectangle. We had a rectangle, and we also define move in that rectangle. And likewise, it takes some parameters. So base shape has move method defined, and then also the um, the rectangle has has its own executable code. And I'm just like you know schematically showing that uh, there's some there's some code to execute with both of these methods. So uh, those methods are definitely stored. Oops, so let me just change that to like a hair hairline and so there's one method in memory there's another method in memory both methods are available so there's base shape move rectangle move 
So then we create, begin to create our shapes. So far, I've created uh, two shapes, uh, one rectangle and one circle. So let's 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 take a look at, at those two on this uh, in this uh, uh, diagram, and so we know that both are deriving uh, from the class, from the base shape, and base shape provides x and y, right, uh, coordinates. So let's say this is our let's first we create a rectangle. So I can I can show my rectangle as. Uh, basically one um, uh, one two uh, three uh, four integers recall that there there are uh, four integers representing uh, representing a rectangle in memory uh, there is also the fifth element in my rectangle uh, which is pointing to um, uh, which is pointing to the table of methods. So let's let me just annotate this uh, very quickly. So this is x inside my rectangle. This is y inside my rectangle. This is x two, okay, and this is y two in my rectangle, and what happens is that the methods, as you can see, are not stored with my object. But if I create the second rectangle, just like this, I created another rectangle in memory. Um, of course, the, the data attributes are taking part of the size of that object in memory. So each rectangle will have, will have its own values for x and y uh, and uh, uh, act, oops, uh, do, let's do this one more time. Uh, so each rectangle will have uh, uh, its own set of uh, uh, data attributes. But at the same time, uh, what happens is that instead of instead of storing methods with executable code with individual objects, what happens is that internally there is a table of methods for the rectangle, okay? And in that table, what we have is basically we have uh, uh, a reference uh, that points us to the uh, to this specific method, and it has has an entry in the table of methods for the rectangle. So instead of rectangle, each rectangle storing this potentially long uh, information in each instance uh, that represents the executable code, instead each rectangle has this additional piece and what it does is it simply points from this rectangle uh, to the stable in memory. Uh, so see, it's pointing to the same location, and let me just do my arrows, making sure that they look like, you know, uh, pointers in memory. Uh, and uh, so each rectangle, instead of instead of duplicating this code in its own memory, only has a reference to the table. And I'm just showing one little square in that table, which points us to the location of the method in memory. Because if you think about this, uh, the code doesn't have to be replicated multiple times. Clearly, the data attributes, this is a rectangle and this is another rectangle, the data attributes have to be uh, replicated each time we create an object. However, with methods, methods stay in the same location in memory and all that uh, compiler does it adds a little hidden area uh, hidden member to our class which basically points to the location which tells us where exactly the rectangle is now let me compare it with a circle so with the situation with a circle I still get and I can basically copy and paste X and Y from here 
control C, control V, uh, copy and paste um, this uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, example which represents uh, a circle in memory of course I need another little uh, little piece over here which is the radius right which is the radius so let me just kind of scribble this uh, uh, R over here so I have X Y and the radius and this is an example of a circle in memory and guess what it also does get this extra piece right here extra piece hidden uh, extra piece which points to the location uh, to the special table which keeps track of what each method for this particular uh, for this particular class of objects uh, should be uh, representing the move right so uh, let me just do these connections right here and I will you and I'll show them as arrows so this is an arrow pointing from my circle to this table and then from this table to the actual location of the move but remember that uh, my circle never defined the move so this table pointer is pointing to actually the base shape move but is as as I as I decided to per potentially create another circle right control C control V so here's an here's another circle right I apologize for some inconsistencies in my drawings here I'll just erase this older older line but uh, anyway uh, this thing here still has uh, uh, a reference to this location in memory right which is pointing to the same table which then tells the object here's your here's the executable code for your move so why is this important for us to know uh, this is really how uh, the compiler resolves low um, uh, memory management for instances of our objects and provides access from the object to the location of the table which specifies this is this is where your methods are right so so the methods are found through uh, through the special table uh, let me actually save this save this